Florida's Space Coast. This is your career. Welcome to Your Career. I'm Debbie Featherston, your host, and with me is Claire Knowles. She is the creator of ClaireEKnowles.com. And Claire, I am so excited that you're here because you are a wealth of knowledge. You have been in the workforce for a few decades, a as few. I have, and your experience when it comes to workplace violence and particularly looking at issues of bullying is not theoretical, but you've lived it. You've, right? Absolutely. So, so that's our subject, is workplace violence. And this is an area that I think is of great importance. Yes. Just like diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. right? And, and, but I want you to start off, please, with telling us what really, in, what's involved in workplace violence. So when you hear the word workplace violence, what does that really mean? And maybe give us some examples so Certainly. people can truly Certainly. connect to it. Debbie, first I want to say thank you for letting me on this program the way you have to invite me this because I agree this is a subject that anyone in any career needs to be aware of. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that I start to tell you that I'm proactive, always have been all my life, and I'm not a victim. Mm -hmm. And anyone out there needs to know they don't have to be a victim because you can navigate the waters right. of the workplace. Right. And, uh, that's how I'd like to start because yeah. it's about preventing workplace violence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So your question is the spectrum, and it is indeed a spectrum. It goes from everything that would be bullying or harassment yeah. to greater things, taunting, fighting in the workplace, even suicide or homicide rather mm -hmm. could be suicide as well. Mm -hmm. But it involves all sorts of dysfunctional behaviors, and that's a key. Dysfunctional meaning things that take people down that are disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It could be things like a person d always d eroding someone else's yeah. confidence. Yeah. That type of thing going mm -hmm. on and mm -hmm. on. So it can be bullying, it can be all of it. Mm -hmm. But it comes under one word, disrespect. I see it as one individual not being, dis or being disrespectful of another, unable yeah. to respect. Mm -hmm. So where does that come from? It could be boss to employee can be employee to employee, it can be a, with a stranger, with a client, with a customer, with a patient. Yeah. There can be all sorts of workplace violence mm. in that regard. So right. I, I think, I, I hope that that's a good start. I think it's a great because start. Because it is a spectrum and it's, but it doesn't have to happen. That's the whole thing. It does not have to happen. Well, let's unpack this just a little bit. Based on your experience, what, um, what really leads to this type of behavior that, you know, gets translated into workplace violence? Well, let me give a metaphor. A river, and you're in the canoe, and you are the person that has to navigate down this river. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to run up again? It's like the river of life. It's the river in a workplace. You're going to bump into smooth waters, and then you're going to get the rapids, and then you can bump into a rock. And you have to be able to navigate around that rock. Mm -hmm. That rock could be the bully, okay? Where did that bully come from? What made him angry today? What was his background? There is no one answer, and that's what makes this so difficult. But it does represent anger. It represents inability to have any emotional control. So people who have mm. no emotional quotient or what they call EQ, right are people that have much, much difficulty in the workplace. And we have to navigate around that. And we can. That's mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be a victim. Mm -hmm. And I want to stress here how important the leaders are. The leader in any organization, and here's why. Bullying just didn't happen, which right. I think is what your question really started from. It started way back when with rudeness and incivilities. And when rudeness and incivilities are not checked. Mm -hmm. So they're tolerated. They're tolerated. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? They beget harassment. They beget bullying. And what happens when those are not called out? Right. You get taunting. You get shunning. You get fist fights. Mm -hmm. And right up the line. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's preventable way back when, which is why and I need to stress this so much, which is why I work with leaders and their teams. Right. Because there's a way 
to sit down and to safely lift up the elephants that they have, be able to talk about it, come together, and become much more effective yeah. in what they want to do. Yeah. Together, there's code words that can be taught, there's ways to teach not just the person who's being bullied, but the the bystander mm -hmm. what to mm, do and okay. how, to, how to step up. Because bullies do not like to be exposed. Yeah. Interesting. They do not like to be exposed, yes. and there's very there's ways that you can do that. So too. really, to kind of summarize, you know, some of the, what leads to this is is um, just neglect or or uh, the failure on the part of leadership to really corral and enforce a specific a healthy culture. Absolutely, because when it's allowed to continue like that, that mm -hmm. becomes the opposite, and that's a hostile environment, mm -hmm. a hostile workplace, and. Nobody should have to dread going into work in the morning because of harassment or of bullying. It right. just shouldn't happen. That river and the canoe example is 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 good because it. I want to show you could, you could have something that's simple and something very complex. So mm -hmm. let's take a simpler example, where a person is complaining that she's being badgered all the time. My boss is on my back every day. The work group is on my yeah. case. Da 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 da. Yeah. When you look at that, here's an example, it may not be at all harassment, may not be bullying at all, but mm -hmm. it could be performance. And mm. in this particular case, which I'll just say, the woman was only doing 10% of her job, but she busied herself all day. The boss was always on her case, and the work group had to pick up the slack, so they didn't appreciate it. But that isn't harassment, it isn't right. bullying, but it's a case where a supervisor who's more skilled, more diplomatic, and we're back to your thing without a rule, without your workplace rules enforced. Right. You know, that goes. The other side of the spectrum, you can have the very toxic workplace. Mm -hmm. And there are toxic workplaces mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom where everything is going on. Target is going on, cyber stalking's going on, people are going home crying at night, but they don't feel that they have a voice, they don't know where they're going. And sometimes those particular cases unless you have a brand new CEO come in and yeah. see it and change the rules, yeah. make sure things are enforced. And that's the type of things that happen, Debbie, where people say, I had no choice but to leave, or right. my health right. had gone down, I was stressed out the gazoo. But look at all that space in the mm -hmm. middle. Mm -hmm. Most people's workplaces don't fall on that end that I was right. talking about there or onto the toxic end. Yeah. It's the middle ground. Yeah in the middle ground is where you can make so much headway with people coming together, leaders understanding, I want a workplace that is kind and is humane, mm -hmm. and that's where we work. Mm -hmm. and, and I just love it that people know there is a way through this. You don't yeah. have to be the victim. Yeah, I think so that's that, awesome. That, that's great. That's but it sounds great. like there's multiple parties that are responsible for this. But before I go very much mm -hmm. in that direction, I want to just step back for a minute because I would imagine leaders get frustrated with having to deal with workplace violence because I'm, while we say leaders need to step up and they need to really tell you know call people out and hold people accountable for the 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 poor behavior, right, or the inappropriate behavior. Yes, yes. Um, at the same time, you've got, you know, leaders who are trying and they can't get people to be respond, right, to respond or to stay on board or they're in the, the, the employee that's being um, abusive, yes. right, uh, creating, they're, they're the ones initiating this workplace violence. They um, aren't always being consistent or mm -hmm. they're, as you say, they don't want to be found out, so they're doing it quietly. quietly. Yeah. And then maybe you have others that uh, maybe they, 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 you know, they're, they're packs, right? So in teams, mm -hmm. you know, these guys are doing it to so-and-so, and yet nobody's going Nobody to nobody's gonna call it out. Nobody's going to say a thing. Yeah. Now, my, here's the real issue and the question that I, I want to ask. You've got these leaders who really want mm -hmm. this workplace violence to go away. You've got employees who are being abused, and they want this behavior eradicated as well. Is there some type of a secret sauce or recipe yes. for, okay, There is a us, secret please. sauce, and it is a recipe. And the recipe is simply called respect, mm. and it's also called wanting it so bad that you're willing to get together 
and to talk and to lift up the elephants. When I wrote the book, can you right. see them now? Mm -hmm. I gave 12 different ways, a dozen different ways that you can lift up an elephant safely within a workplace. Now, an elephant is an undiscussable. I, yeah, you good, because you just took the question I, out I of my mouth. That's what it is. <laughs> it's what, something that would be normally considered undiscussable. Yeah. But you can safely lift it up so that the group together will do it. Now, there are things that would come out of that that if I'm being harassed, I have a code word that I can say. Or if you're being mm. harassed and bullied and I'm seeing it, I have a right. code word. And we're taught how to go forward and lift up that bully. Mm -hmm. So, th I mm -hmm. mean, that's a, a side mm. part of it. But what I really want to say for the leader, when you have an organization or a team or a group and a leader can't or doesn't or won't, can't, don't, or won't, that's mm -hmm. how I like to say it, if they will not address it, right. the continuum is real clear. It's going to get worse. Yeah. Effectiveness is going to plummet. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be not only dealing with these psychological safety problems of the workforce right. on the cultural side, but now they're going to have an effectiveness type mm -hmm. of thing and probably mm -hmm. safety problems. Mm -hmm. So if they don't get addressed, then that's what happens in an organization. And I think everybody knows where it ends. So that is the reason, that is the prominent reason, propelling, compelling mm -hmm. reason mm -hmm. that a leader would want to get his team together and say, let's get this fixed yeah. because we need to, because we care about each other. You know, it seems simple enough that, that you know, we would say we're going to create a respectful environment, but how do you really do that? Mm -hmm. I mean. As you said, there has to be a willingness, mm -hmm. right? There has to be a real desire and a willingness that the majority of the team, right, leaders included, mm -hmm. want this new positive environment, healthy that's, work that's environment right. versus a toxic. That's right. They want it bad enough that you have this a process, and I won't go through the whole process sure. here, but it certainly is can be done. And in part of doing that, you either get on board or you don't, or pretty soon you begin to be isolated. Mm -hmm. Because if the bully is mm. always ignored, right, pretty soon it's it, he will not stay. He mm -hmm. will deselect us, mm -hmm. as they say. Yeah, and that's what happens over time. But in the yeah. meantime, you create together, and this is what I'm trying to say. It's a co-creation mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. how we, as a team or group, are going to behave with each other. Yeah, and why it's important to us. You're going in as a consultant. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you have some kind of a script or or questions to frame the conversation? And do I you have do, some and they're rules? even in my book. Okay, so they're in, uh, there's a, a what I what I call a transformational recipe right. of the questions that you would raise okay. with this group, and it involves really our principles. Excellent. How do we want to live Excellent. together, and what is that going to mean to what we're intending to do together as a group? Well, I want to mention this book okay. again, and, and we'll see um, an image of it here shortly. Yes. But can you see them now, Elephants in Our Midst, and Claire Knowles, and, and this is a great read. i got to read, uh, you know, beforehand, and it, it really does, but I, I think it's so important for viewers, if they're in a certain situation like that, whether they're an individual or they're a leader of an organization where they realize, wow, I've got some issues, I have to d deal with this behavior now. There's some incivility, there's some rudeness. You know, we're, we're, you know, there's a downward spiral starting. I've got to stop it. That's right. This is going to give them some of those details that we don't have time to really unpack here. Yes, and they're easy ways that you can okay. lift up the elephant, the hidden ones, yeah, the yeah. ones that are hard now, to Now, when at. you say lift up the elephant, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people think lift up is a positive. You're trying to expose the elephant. Yes, but really? I do consider it a positive. Okay. Because if it's hidden and it's been a menace mm -hmm. to the organization, oh, well. then you need to be able to lift it up. And in that case, that definitely would be positive. It is positive for the organization. Right, got it. One of the things you'd asked me just a second sure, ago sure. about well, when you go in as a consultant, I find this very interesting. And maybe it's just a sign of the times, whatever. But in the 80s, yeah. when sexual harassment or the prevention mm -hmm. of sexual harassment mm -hmm. first came out yeah. and, uh, and every organization was to be training on it and that, we used the three words for training. And what I noticed today is no one even knows that. Yeah. And those three words for a woman to fully know was it must be unwanted, mm -hmm. whatever the advance or the whatever, it right. must be unwanted, it must be unwelcome, number mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. and then repeated. 
Yeah. So it was very easy to learn to be able to say, what you've just said yeah. is unwanted. I didn't yeah. ask for this. It's yeah. unwelcome, and you're toast if it's repeated. Right. So, right. I mean, it's the kind of thing that, um, I, I don't mean to come on so strong on that, but it's the kind of thing that a wording that no one's even thinking about today, and mm -hmm. now we're hearing, well, this happened 30 years ago. Well, what about in the moment? Right. And that's what... Right. This is all about how yeah. do you prevent it? Because, yeah. again, you don't have to Absolutely. be able to dread going to work because of it. Because there are ways to call the bully. Right. I'm curious. Do you find that there's certain types of organizations that uh, tend to be given the environment where maybe bullying can become more more it can it can sneak into the culture more quickly than other types of organizations? I'm going to say no. Okay. And here is the reason. I have worked in financial institutions like banking, mm -hmm. law firms, credit unions. We've been in manufacturing operations. We've been in um, municipalities. Yeah. And here's why. This is about people. Mm -hmm. A culture in an organization is about the people in it and their inter interrelations. I mean, how right. do they interact with each right. other? Is right. it positive? Is it good? Yeah. And it doesn't matter the setting. That's mm, my, my answer. Beautiful. It does not matter the setting. It does not matter the, uh, the type of, of uh, work. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We've been in machine shops, for example. Perfect, perfect. Because I was factories. thinking always more about athletic teams or race teams or, you know, the sporting industry, if you see that more than another. But that's good to know that it, it that, is human nature. You know, my, my guess would be is if you were in a macho environment that was probably male, there mm -hmm. might be more of this bantering type mm, of thing that, yeah. that might go. But when I'm talking about the, the right. preventing workplace violence, that usually includes a segment of women that are mixed yes. with this workplace. Yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's more of a, a blend of genders. Yes, absolutely. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So tell us, uh, Claire, a little bit about the organizations that you work with um, to co-create their future and build effectiveness uh, along the kindness and humanity side of the org. That is my deep mission. I, I can't repeat that enough because guess what happens when you have that process in place and people suddenly say, okay, I can come to work today and I know this isn't going to happen again. Mm -hmm. And I know that there is a feedback mechanism in place so that if we start to deteriorate, we will lift it back up again. Right. We can keep it addressed. And we know that we now have new relationships that have been built. We now understand each other a, a lot better. Mm -hmm. The man that was the bully, let's yeah. just say you, it was a man, and just, yeah. it could yeah, be a woman. Just, in sure, fact, that's I right. should say that women are women's worst enemies sometimes mm -hmm. in, in organizations. But let's just say whomever that, yeah. that bully was. We don't know why, but maybe we do now. Maybe he has shared what prompts the behavior, he or she, mm -hmm. that, that has come forth that has been so disruptive to yeah. the organization. Yeah. But what we have learned in it and what the group understands is what, what where we were was here and we're better than that. We don't have to conduct ourselves like that. Yeah, We can be up here. Mm -hmm. And we can be up here if we help each other. Mm -hmm. So there's a helping content mm -hmm. to it as mm -hmm. well. So we've we've seen it work wonderfully, and I I'm excited because the reason I love that I have a platform here to share it mm -hmm. is because I know we do not have to be victims. We don't have to dread going right. to work because you don't have to go there. You know, uh, the question just popped in my head, Claire, if you don't mind. Yes. You know what what advice would you give? Uh, to an individual who is looking for a job and if I'm going I'm looking for a job well, I need to be doing some some of my analysis should be about the culture of the organization absolutely uh, what are some of the indicators that would that would tell me predictably that this is a healthy work environment versus perhaps a toxic one as an HR person yeah. I would be remiss if I didn't ask the question how long was the person in the job before you that you're looking to get? Mm -hmm. And how long was the person before that person in the job? Yeah. And what is the general turnover of the organization? Because those are two very key questions of why people would leave yeah. that quickly. Yeah. And I would, I would want to know Those are good questions. That. That's what I would yeah. want to know. Do you have a code of conduct? Very good. Is there a policy? 
Mm -hmm. Is there a preventing workplace violence policy? So where, where might I find these? In the employee handbook? Should be. Posted maybe in the Should break Should have room? had training on Training, them, okay. Yes, and you know, is there a program that mm -hmm. involves not just what does the policy mean and if something happens, what do you do to file a complaint? Right, right. But it's what is the, the, the culture like mm. in there? And you can see that by by the anger or whatever. But, but again, you're looking at the leader. Mm -hmm. How does the leader conduct himself or herself? How do the teams interact? What would I be looking for from is, the behavior of the leader? If Well, if, if no one would speak up around the table until they knew how the leader felt about the question, ah. then there's no openness in right. the organization. There's yeah. no feedback. It's a my way or the highway mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. to start with. Yes, right there. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And, uh, but, that, but that doesn't necessarily uh, tell you what's happening in the workplace right. violence. So right. I would think it gets, it gets right down to what really is the training like. Mm -hmm. Is it something you take on a computer right. and if you answer the questions right, you're done? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or is it some sort of a specialized training to truly understand if you and I are having an argument or yeah. if you and I have this um, bully situation, yeah. you know, how do we handle it? What yeah. kind of training has gone on there? Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's another thing, but yeah. leadership is key. I think leadership is key, and the one thing that I was thinking about is looking at some of the behaviors of a leader. For me, I, I wonder what you think about this, but I would say if I'm working with a leader that, to your earlier point, is really asking other people for their advice and input. Mm -hmm. If the leader is humble and gives credit to everyone on the team, so that, again, it's building that inclusion and well, creating absolutely. a positive environment, right? Yes. Inclusion is, is, is an earmark, yeah. Yeah. definitely. The trans and, Go ahead. No, I was, it is. So that would be, be tremendously important, yeah. I think. Because I was thinking transparency. Right. You know, if they make a mistake, Mm -hmm. You know, they correct it. Uh, having somebody's back if there's a mistake. Say, right. hey, you tried it. You took a risk. It didn't work out quite so well. That's okay, Bob. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, whatever the case. Absolutely. You see what I mean? Yeah, because you can have the manager or the leader that's just the opposite who shoots the messenger. That's right. You know, and that's does right. not accept yeah. feedback. So those are two very key, key, key pieces. Okay. So you know? those behaviors might be very helpful to look in, at, to yes. look at yes. right? L really look for those kinds of behaviors. Yes. And I like to also look if I were going into an organization I want to see are the rules that are written on the wall mm -hmm. what do the people really think about those yeah. are they for real or are they just a mission statement do yeah. we really care about people how yeah. what does the person in the the, what does the janitor think of this? Yeah, are they really living it? Exactly. Is it right? Exactly. Is it really integrated into the culture or is it just words on a and is poster? There, is there respect? Mm -hmm. Do people respect the CEO mm -hmm. as much as they do the lowest person in the, yeah. in the building? We only have maybe two or three minutes left and I'd love for you to just explore bullying a, a little bit more. Just. I'd like to take a look at an example, kind of a what-if scenario, because mm -hmm. there's been different studies out that talk that there's a high percentage of people that have been bullied in the workplace, which is surprising. And actually, when there was a study that I read about the U.S. government, they were actually talking about our military. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the bullying was being done by the leaders to the employees. Employees. What And could, that can be, yes. And what what advice would you give to an individual to deal with that? So if I've got a manager that's really bullying me, mm -hmm. you know, I think they're wanting me out. They probably are. So how do I handle that and, if I feel and, I'm and, really qualified well, and what I capable? ask people to do, if you uh, freeze for a minute and look at it, is it just you yeah. or does this person treat others mm. the same way? That's the very okay. first question. Okay, good. And if this person is doing that, is it every day? Mm -hmm. How often is it? Is it on, at, only at certain times? Mm -hmm. Is it when he's being bullied by the person above mm -hmm. him? You know, so is it in response to other pressures maybe? Right. Try and understand it. That, mm -hmm. I'm trying to say explain it. I'm not saying excuse it, but to, Just to understand. explain it. Can you see patterns? Can you see it? That would be the next thing. Okay. And if you believe that it's just you and it is only you that this is happening to, mm -hmm. then I go to the next thing. Let's try and fight it a little, but mm -hmm. I'd like to fight it in a professional way. Mm -hmm. In other words, have you had the conversation? Do you realize when you do this, this is how this makes me feel? Mm 
yeah. and I'm getting this impression that you don't want me here. Mm -hmm. Is this what is happening? Mm. I would like to have it straight yeah. and force him or her to mm -hmm. be professional. That mm -hmm. way, if you should choose the next one of flight to decide you don't want to tolerate this anymore yeah. and you don't believe it's going to change, yeah. then you have something to share on your exit interview that I did have the conversation and it did not change. The other is to enlist help. Mm -hmm. That's why you have HR departments, right. supposedly, and that's right. why you have EAP yep. uh, organizations that can help. Right. And it is wonderful when everything is confidential and stays that mm -hmm. way and you mm -hmm. can get the help. And I've seen yeah. many, many people helped. Yeah. That example I had shared going on a river of the Certain. really toxic ones, Right. there you can have trouble where the confidences yeah. aren't held yeah and that could be that and then could there be could bad. be retribution and all kinds of problems, yes right that's right and yeah. and one of the interesting pieces and this is why I shared with you what I did about taking stock and moving yeah. slowly and making sure this is what it really is and right. trying to address it to make it better right because you have that responsibility mm -hmm. right but one of the reasons that uh, you know I really want to do that is I think that's the best way through. We mm -hmm. have to take a responsibility mm -hmm. piece ourselves yeah. and then be able to so move forward. So have some courage. Just have well, some courage. courage. Yes, yeah. it's, it is courage. And um, I'm going to have to make that the last word. Yeah. And I thank you. This has been a fascinating uh, show, Claire. It thank is you so much for your help. And, and here's to courage. Yes, thank you. And on behalf of my guests and everyone here on the set of Your Career, thank you for watching and remember be career happy. More information about this program is available online at millermediagroup.org.